begin, I have to tell you something about Arkansas. I have two friends, and they don't know each other, but they're both very wealthy people. Actually, they are very wealthy, they're not even great people. <laughs> but they are very successful, and they both got very, very sick. And they had a form of cancer that the New York hospitals said, not going to work, it's over. And I spoke to one of them, and I said, what's going on? He said, I'm going to Arkansas. I said, why? Interesting, right? You hear so much about New York, great hospitals. I said, why are you doing that? He said, Dr. Barlogi. Does anyone know Dr. Barlogi? This was 10 years ago. He was supposed to be gone in four months. He's living, he's happy, he's healthy, he's mean. We could have saved a nicer person, to be honest with you. My other friend was the same thing a couple of years later. They don't even know each other. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to Arkansas. I said, let me guess. It's Dr. Barlow. I don't even know how to remember the name. But it was really amazing, and likewise, he's cured. I mean, they were literally cured. They're, they're a great shape. And they didn't have a chance. So with all you hear about these great hospitals in New York and all of the different things, all I know is, you know, the proof is in the pudding, isn't it, folks? It's amazing. <laughs> so we have a, an incredible country, but we better be damn careful because we're not going to have a great country for much longer if we don't start to move and move properly. You know, it's very interesting and very sad, but we don't have victories anymore. You remember, we used to have victory. We used to have great trade deals. We'd win. We always win. Now we never win. You look at this new deal with Iran. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's done by rank amateurs. And you know, one of the things about like nuclear is very, very, there's nothing more important. Because the power, the biggest risk we have today, it's not the armies, it's not, it's the power of the weapon. It's the nuclear, that's the ultimate. But even Short of that, the power. We need strength. We need a strong military, really strong military. Stronger than ever before. And we need nothing but cut back. And I will say this I've had great receptivity. If I win and I become president, we're going to have such a strong military, nobody's going to mess with us.
They want to put, if it holds 10, they want to put 7. Okay, 7 votes. And you tell me. The people in this room, assuming a thing like that passed, which here, but the people in this room, they're going to say, oh, 7. Do you think some bad killer is going to say, gee, I can only put 7 in the magazine? They have to protect. They're trying to reel it away. The four great Marines that were killed had no guns. Gun-free zone. You ever hear anything so ridiculous? A gun-free zone. I was on Bill O'Reilly last night. We were talking about it. So this madman comes in. Islamic terrorism. Big problem. Now we have a president that we'll talk about. He doesn't want to mention it. He doesn't want to say it. And you had in 09, you had a case of the same thing. Very similar. You have to know what the problem is before you can solve it. But if these guys had guns, two of them were really highly decorated. One of them was unbelievable. He was a superstar. A superstar. And he had no gun. And this guy blazing in, and they were sitting ducks. Can't have it. We've got to protect our Second Amendment, and we've got to very well. Let's get rid of these guns. And we'll do it. 
great job.
We have four prisoners. Used to be three, right? Four prisoners. They're over in Iran. Iran doesn't want them. They don't need them. They're just doing it to taunt us. To show everyone that we're stupid. That we have stupid people representing us. Now, if we have the right messenger, meaning across the table, messenger, you say, fellas. Now, in this case, it's all fellas, I hate to say. They haven't figured out that the women are smarter than the men. It's going to take them about 150 more years to that time. But you say, fellas, you got four people. It used to be three. And I would have done it at the beginning, not at the end. I would have said, fellas, you got three people. You got to let them go. Great signal to the American people. You don't want them. You don't need them. Great signal. Let them go. You don't let them go. They're not negotiating. And you start doubling up. They never even mentioned that. And then they asked Obama yesterday. And the anger that he had looking at this reporter. He just asked about the prisoners. Do you feel good about like leaving the prisoners there? How do you make a deal when you got these four people? Now four. And the anger from Obama, the anger looking at him. And Kerry, he said, we didn't want to bring that up because we didn't want to complicate the deal. Can you want to complicate the deal? Hey, we got four people who want less complicated. <laughs> My young kids at the table understand better than they do. That's complicated? We didn't want to complicate the deal. Why do we give back all the billions? We didn't want to complicate the deal. One thing has nothing to do with the other. This was nuclear. They can't talk about like four prisoners along with nuclear like it's one quarter of a sentence. You don't even have to have anything. They can just let them go. And you know, I want to convince them it's good for Iran. Because the deal would go through. Because you know what? That's one of those points that's really bad. It looks bad. We feel like fools. And that's why they're dancing in the street. You don't see anybody dancing in the street in Arkansas. I can tell you that. There's nobody dancing in the street. So, it's so sad to see it because we have such opportunity, but we have such stupid people representing us. It's pretty sad.
people two weeks ago that were going after me, even the reporters, they said Trump was right. They didn't report what I said, by the way. They cut the sentence in half. They didn't report. I said Mexico is sending, but they leave that out. You know, minor things like this. And now I'm getting congratulatory messages from everyone and the Pope, and they like that I didn't go back. Rush Limbaugh said something the other day, which was very interesting for the show. He said, I've never seen anything like it. Trump was attacked as viciously as I've ever seen. And every politician that I know would have gone and begged for an apology. They would have apologized. And he went out and he doubled down and he made it even stronger because I know.
United States, we get nothing except we just close plants in Michigan and other places in order to let you build it. Now here's what would happen. He will say, no, 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 you can't. He's a smart guy, but he's a very good guy. Smart. They just announced more jobs are leaving for other countries. They just announced. Ford. A lot of jobs are leaving out of Ford. A lot of other companies too. Because we don't keep them because we don't have leaders that know how to keep them. They don't have a clue. And Bush will never have a clue. And Hillary will never have a clue. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. I mean, like, who would you rather have negotiating against China or Mexico? Bush, Hillary, or Trump?
Millions of cars coming in. What do we get? We sell them wheat. And if we sell too much, they have riots in the street. It's like 20% of what they sell. So I go, I tell the city, it's okay. Don't worry about it. They won't take our product. They don't want to take, you read it all the time. They don't want to take our product. I say, that's okay. We're about 20%, maybe even less. So whatever we are, you're going to be. From now on, you're going to sell us 20% more. So it's going to be uh, nice and easy. You know how fast they'll be opening up their markets? Like in two seconds. That's easier than Ford. That's easier than Ford, maybe not. But we don't have people that even understand. So a friend of mine, and let me tell you, Japan is roaring back, Japan is coming back. A friend of mine who is a big excavator, that's what he does. You know, I build, but I really do great as build. Can you imagine how good I do the infrastructure of this country? I would make it so and so inexpensive. They built a hospital for $2 billion that doesn't work. Two billion. I said two billion. You can build 20 hospitals that do two billion dollars a hospital. It's not even a big hospital. It's a mess. It doesn't work. But can you imagine if we had somebody that really understood roads, tunnels? I think what they do best is build. I mean, it would be unbelievable what we could do. But this guy's an excavator, and he says to me, and I see him, he's like, down. He always bought caterpillar tractors. And I said, what's wrong? He said, you know, I feel really bad because I bought a tremendous amount of excavation equipment. I said, you buy cats? He said, no, I bought Komatsu. I said, why? He said, because Japan, and you've been reading about it recently, Japan has cut the yen, cut their currency, devalued it so much, so much, that it's impossible for anyone to compete with them. Now, China makes Japan look like beginners with the devaluations. And the trade deal, I'm the one that spoke up, I said, how can you make a trade deal without talking about devaluation? Because that's their number one tool. And I did a lot. I mean, everybody heard me. And then they started talking about it, but they didn't do it right. They didn't do it. The trade deal was a disaster. They didn't do it right. So this guy was so devastated that he bought it. But he said, I owe it to my wife. I owe it to my family. I owe it to my employees. You got to make the best deal. I said, you're right. You do. I mean, you See, I believe strongly in free trade. The problem with free trade, it's a big problem, is you have to have smart leaders. You have to have smart negotiators. Or it's a disaster. It's been a disaster for us. We don't know what we're doing. We have massive deficits. Look at the deficit we have with Japan, or look at the deficit we have with China. It's like, if you look in terms of profit and loss, they're disasters. But, but it's like that with virtually every country. I think every country. I mean, does anybody, does any, do we do well with anybody? I don't think so. So, the reason that these polls come out, I think, and they come out so strongly. It's because I do talk like this. I do talk about the fact that, you know, like I was a great student at a great school. I'm, I'm like this person that knows how the system works. I was a part of the system for the other side. And I made a lot of money. You know, when I put my numbers in the other day, people were surprised because they said, oh, you know, it's interesting. They said, he'll never run. The genius pundits who are really dumb people. They said he'll never run. And they said he'll never file his forms. Oh, I did that very recently. Then they said he'll never file his financials. In 90 some odd pages long, like 92, 98. It's a lot of financials. And they said, I filed it. They said, oh, he filed it. And then it turned out to be a big number, over $10 million. It's good, right? $10 million. And I'm not bragging about that work. I'm just saying that is the mentality. Whatever the hell is up there, that is the mentality that the country needs. That's what they want. And that's why I'm leading all these polls, because people are tired of watching us get ripped off. They're tired of stupidity. They're tired of watching us just... I did it.
television show, and believe me, NBC wanted to be so big. NBC didn't care about inclusion. They said, he's not, he's not practicing inclusion. I practice more inclusion than they do. NBC is angry at me because I wouldn't do the new season because I said, you know, The Apprentice has been this tremendous success in the world, right? And, and NBC was at my top executives at NBC. We're in my office a few months ago begging me to do it. They please don't run. I said, no, you gotta stand. I'm running because I can make this country great again. I've given up a lot of money. You saw the money I made from the apprentice. It's a lot of money. It's filed. $213 million I was spent. $213 million. I could go on forever. And I said, no. I want to make the country great. I mean, I'm giving up more than my whole campaign's going to cost. If you think about it.
so that you can pay taxes in Arkansas.
So you can live with either way, and I know what you're going through here. You've got a little bit of a complicated thing. You know, a lot of people consider a term limit an election, right? You have an election. You know good, you have an election, you get voted out. But I can live either way. I, can, I, I know both sides of it very well. I've seen some unbelievably talented people have to leave office. And likewise, I've seen some people that shouldn't be in office, they stay forever. And so it works both ways. Okay, yes, ma'am. Hi, um, my name is Gabrielle Harvey, and I'm going to be a senior in high school this year. And if you aren't elected, how do you foresee my future will end up being? Well, you have to go out and we have to create jobs, because I have this question so much, especially from young college students, where they go and they borrow money and they're borrowing up to the neck and they don't know what to do, and they become good students and they work very hard and they graduate from college and they can't get a job. And it's a very tough thing. We need jobs. I mean, we need jobs. We need good jobs. We don't need bad jobs. We need real jobs. You know, you have 93, 94 million people that essentially are unemployed that aren't working in the country. It's a tough situation. Just do, you know what? Do well, get good marks, work hard, and remember this do what you love. Focus on what you love. You're going to be very successful. Okay? Thank you. So Thank you. He's a Bush appointment. 
Two times he could have killed him. Especially the first time. It was shocking. Nobody believes the decision. It was a wrong decision. And we have to put great people in who believe in our values. That's very important. That's one of the most important decisions you're going to make as president. Okay, final question. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Trump, I'm retired military. Good. Uh, thank you for your comments that you said earlier about protecting our military and our veterans. Thank you. Um, what is your position on uh, what's happening in Iraq and Afghanistan with you know ISIS taking over some of the territory on Iraq? What's your position on maybe putting more troops back in Afghanistan and Iraq? So I was against going into Iraq. I'm a very militaristic type person. But you got to know when to use it. And if you look Reuters in July of 2004, the Bush people came to my office because I was getting so much publicity. It was such a bad thing to do. I said, you're going to knock out. We had these two powers in Greek militarily. And they'd go over here, they'd fight for years, they'd fight here, and they're back for what they were the same. Saddam Hussein would go 10 feet, the Iran would go 10 feet, and then they'd rest for a few years, right? I said, you're going to decapitate one of those guys. And what's happening exactly? And I said this 2004. I said Iran will take over Iraq. And the oil. And other people will also take over the oil. And they'll make Saddam Hussein look like a baby. ISIS. So ISIS has the oil. Iran is going to take over Iraq. You know, last week, just so you understand, Iraq was meeting with Iran. Iran is essentially taking over Iraq. And in a sense, there is no Iraq. It's different factions, different groups. The government is corrupt as hell. So we spent two trillion dollars, thousands of lives, wounded warriors who I love all over the place, on stupid decisions. Now, with that being said, you cannot let ISIS get away with what they're doing. You cannot. Let